please take a seat, get cosy, and enjoy a cup of terror with me, Stephanie Valentine, and little Miss Moo over here, who is so cute. I'm not using her today because I have an apple and elderflower tea, which smells amazing. So she's just going to sit here and watch you guys. Hello, my spooky little pumpkins. How are you? Thank you for coming back to join me once more for another strange true crime case. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for being here. A Cup of Terror is a series of videos where I talk about true crime cases that have a dash of the strange, be that supernatural, to do with the occult or something, just downright odd. Now, I know it's been a while. This heat wave that we've had recently has just messed things up for me. It's too hot to do anything. I'm so unproductive in the summer. It's so annoying. So <laughs> please bear with me until we get to cooler temperatures. Um, and once again, please ignore any kind of building work you hear. I swear they wait until I'm filming to do all of their noisy work. So today's story, it's very short but so interesting. There is crime involved, but this is more of a ghost story and it's historical, a Victorian true crime ghost story. Ooh. So today's story takes place one night in July, 1898 in Swansea, Wales, specifically Powell Street. Powell Street was a part of the town where a lot of the working class would live, specifically industrial workers, railwaymen, and seafarers and sailors. One of the residents of Powell Street was Henry O'Neill and his young wife. Now, Henry was a seaman whose life had seen a lot of misfortune and bad luck. He would sometimes use the alias Henry Price to kind of cover up some of the things he had done and to stop people finding out about the, the dodgy stuff he'd done in the past. Now, on that particular night, Henry, we're not quite sure what happened. Something changed and, well, he was in bed with his wife and something came over him. He became very, very frenzied and he brutally stabbed her over and over again, killing her instantly. Now, afterwards, he seemed to kind of realise what he had done and he was so regretful and remorseful that he ended up running out of the house and down the road and he threw himself into the Swansea Canal where he subsequently died. Now, you would think that that would be the end of the story, but here is where we get to the ghostly part. Now, this was a shocking crime, obviously, and people were appalled at what had happened life soon returned to normal as it does. Henry's house was occupied by new tenants and things were normal for the next year. The events of that gruesome night forgotten for the most part. However, the following October, people started noticing strange and unusual incidents. The residents of Powell Street believed that Henry's ghost had returned from beyond the grave. Ooh, spooky. Hmm. Now, a few people claim to have seen his ghost in the street. One little boy who saw the ghostly figure ended up falling quite ill as a result. And one woman who was taking in her washing after dark claimed to feel his touch on her face feeling clammy fingers all over her face and she actually caught sight of the spectre vanishing into thin air. Henry was seen walking around his garden and the gardens of the residents of the street. Another woman was reading downstairs late at night when all of a sudden she saw Henry's face peering through the window at her. She was terrified and I think we all would be, wouldn't we? And she quickly ran to her husband. The residents of the street were so scared, with many of them refusing to leave the house after dark for fear of bumping into the spirit. One of the occupants, Mrs Williams, she was actually the new tenant of Henry's house. She was a little more sceptical. 
laughing off the claims of ghostly apparitions and dismissing them as nonsense. One day she was doing some gardening and she had dug the soil ready for planting. The earth was soft and fresh. When she woke up the next morning, however, she saw newly made footsteps in the soil and she soon changed her mind. The residents of the street decided that they needed definitive proof of this apparent ghost. Some of the men decided to spend the night in Henry's former home, hoping to catch the spirit haunting the house. They stayed up all night, but they didn't see anything. No sighting of any ghostly activity. Did they scare him away? Who knows? And after this, the reports of any sightings soon died away. Apparently, the local paper gave some advice to any locals who might be scared of the ghost. It said, The people living in this street should bring a little common sense to bear on the subject. Which made me chuckle. That's some good, sensible Victorian advice there. <laughs> so what do we think? Did the residents of Powell Street really see a ghost? Did someone see something and it put their fear of the paranormal in everyone else's head? And they started seeing things, perhaps. Remember, the Victorians were very much believers in the spirit world, so it would have been very easy to convince them that Henry's ghost had come back. Mrs. Williams and her footprints in the soil. Well, we'd probably need better proof than that because anybody could have made those, couldn't they? But who are we to say that they didn't see an actual ghost? Henry's spirit may well have made a visit back to his former home. Maybe the murder of his wife was laying heavy on his conscience and this might have kept him on this earthly plane. As you know, I am a believer in the paranormal and I like to keep an open mind, so who knows? Who are we to say? So that was today's case. Very short, I know, very short, but I really loved this story. It involves a lot of my favourite things, murder, ghosts and Victorians. <laughs> Not that murder's good, you know, but it's interesting. Anyway, thank you for hanging out with me today and join me next time for another cup of terror.